here's the thing. For us to check the zero lash, we need to get the rockers on the base circle of the camshaft, all right? Uh, so however you want to do that, you could, if you've timed it already uh, off the distributor, you could just follow the rotor and get the rotor to point on number six, because uh, that's the cylinder we want to check uh, zero lash on. Or you could leave it totally alone, because right now, if you've just fitted the camshaft dot to dot, you are actually on compression number six, all right? It's already set up like that. The front two lobes are on rocking, which means the exhaust stroke is just finished, inlet is just starting to open, so we call that overlap. So we know that this uh, number six cylinder is on firing. That's the situation where you adjust your hydraulic lifter. So all we're going to do is turn these bolts down until we get zero lash, all right? Okay, hopefully we can see that in the light. Now I'm adjusting the lifter, and you can see the lifter plunger is just sinking a little bit. We do not want it to sink. That would not be zero lash if I tightened it there. So we back the uh, bolt off until you just get rid of that lash, okay? So you can see that second lifter there is being compressed, so we don't want that. We just want to do it up enough to take out the lash, all right? Some people like to adjust these things by spinning the push rod. Like, that's even got resistance on it there, so I'll do this from the top and get my fingers out. So to me, that's a little tight because that push rod is actually tight. Oh yeah, it was, there we go. So there's the lash, and that one was down a little bit too. So now we can, oh, did you see that lifter spin then? Just by turning the push rod, that lifter actually spun a little bit. And in this one, the center disc in the, uh, inside the lifter is spinning. So we've just got contact, that is zero lash. And from there, we will tighten down the rocker bolts and see how many turns it takes to uh, bring it down. Let me count how many turns this takes. So we're gonna set the ratchet here. So we're gonna go half, one, one and a half, two turns, exactly. Half, one, half, and three quarters, one and three quarters. To me, straight away, I would say the valve stem heights are not equal, all right? If they were equal, I would expect that these bolts would pull down exactly the same amount. Now, if I look down the hydraulic lifter, oh my goodness, look how far they're pushed down. I reckon that's right on the limit. Oh, no, something's not right here. They are pushed down way too far. All right, that's probably getting close to hydraulic lock. So uh, something's not right here. You know, either it's had a huge amount shaved off the head and deck, I would estimate something like 60 or 70 thou would have been removed off this. That just doesn't make sense. Gonna have to look into this, I think, and uh, see what's going on. But that hydraulic lifter is compressed way too much, all right? And look, if you watch my other videos, you know I don't care um, how deep you put the lifter, as long as it's not too close to the uh, bottoming out, otherwise they become a solid tappet. But the hydraulic lifter will work anywhere in that range, okay? And you know, it's quite funny that I've uh, read some really old text on hydraulic lifters, and they say that they should be down half a turn, and if they're any tighter than that, the engine will start missing. Well, that is actually a lot of rot. Um, that's what they believed back in the 60s, and uh, after many, many, many years of uh, researching the subject and uh, practical experience, I know the hydraulic lifter will work anywhere in that range, from just being down 20 thou all the way down to about three and a half mil, the hydraulic lifter will work. And you can use, uh, in the older engines, you can use the adjustment up here on the rockers to adjust your geometry even though it's gonna push the lifter down further. As long as it's not as, as far down as this, this is just way too far, it's almost on hydraulic lock, so we're gonna have a look at this. 
pull it back apart. That means all the rest of them are like that as well because they're all already bolted down. So they're down way too far. I would assume they'd be the same. So we need to have a look at this and uh, sort this out. Looks like we might have to put shorter push rods in it to fix it because uh, you can't do anything with the posts at this stage because we haven't even got to the geometry side of things uh, to see if the geometry is correct. We just want to get this lifter adjustment back to where it should. So let me have a look at what's going on here. Ah, well, would you friggin' believe it, hey? This engine has been running with 186 push rod lengths, 9.136 of an inch, when they should be 9.016 of an inch. And that would explain why the lifter is being uh, compressed so much, way too much. All right, so yeah, let's try a set of the, the right push rods in this and then see what we uh, come up with on the amount of turns on this bolt. Okay, we're just going to do exactly the same thing that we did previously. We're going to try and get zero lash happening. So just before, now you could use your finger if you like, your choice. But I prefer if I've got the side cover off to actually have a look at what's going on. See, once again, I don't know if that's showing up. The hydraulic lifter is actually uh, spinning when I spin the push rod, which is great. That means the uh, lifter is free enough to uh, spin. Okay, I've got zero lash here now. Let's see how many turns this goes down using standard rods. So here we go. Half a turn. One turn. Okay, that's not, not that great. And I'll show you in a little bit why they're different. Okay, very important. That would be, if, you, if all you were interested in, in was the preload on the lifter, most of you would think one turn's too tight, but it's not really. It'll, it'll be satisfactory. What worries me more is the difference between them. So the rock geometry on one will be different to the other, and the reason for that is valve stem heights. Okay, and we'll look at that shortly. When I, I'm going to have to remove all these rockers now, and replace all the push rods um, so we can get the correct push rods in there. But I was just checking out standard rods, see how they came out. So Now on my website, um, if you go to my Tech Talk page, I've got uh, on Tech Talk 12, we talk about the 202 rocker geometry. On Tech Talk 5, we talk about the 186 geometry. And I've conveniently converted all the movement of the bolt uh, or the nut and tell you exactly how far it is going to push your push rod into your hydraulic lifter at a specified amount of turns of the nut or bolt. All right, so it's a pretty handy reference. Now we're going to try shorter push rods in this again to try and bring these turns down to within half a turn. But because the valves are different heights, that might not work in our favour, especially on the lower valve. Okay, there's about three or four uh, valves that st valve stem tips are, are much much lower so I may not even get an adjustment out of those if I don't uh, I'm going to have to put the standard rods back in and that well that's what we what we're dealing with it's going to have to be like that if we wanted to get really pedantic if you were building a, a really good street motor obviously you start off all the same height I doubt if you'd be using the rocker post that come standard on a 202. If you're doing a bit of a performance motor, you'll probably have something like adjustable roller rockers on it, uh, very possibly. But if you're a stock man and everything's stock, then this is uh, basically what you're going to be doing, either changing your push rods uh, to get the hydraulic lifter adjustment where, you, where it came from in the factory. But once again, that doesn't necessarily mean the rocker geometry is going to be correct. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try the, all the, I'm going to have to test obviously every cylinder with the uh, shorter push rods, uh, see how they all come up. And if they all go down at least a little bit more than a quarter of a turn, that would be the ideal rod then for us to uh, stick with. 
All right, let's get that done and see how we go. We'll go back to this number six and I'll put the rods, uh, shorter rods in here and we'll, and, uh, we'll look at the adjustment. Righto, here we go with the shorter push rods. Let's get this on zero lash without moving that hydraulic lifter at all. Okay, let's see what these 40,000 shorter push rods come up like. Half, three quarter, almost one. Uh -huh. And of course this is going to be less. Half, just over half. Okay, that's going to have to do us. That's with 40,000 shorter rods. All right, so as you can see, because of the valve stem height difference, it's just unsatisfactory. You're going to have different rocket ratios, uh, geometries in this. Uh, what can you do? Um, not much we can do in this case. Well, what I have to do now is just check that there's no loose ones using these shorter rods anywhere in the line here. So we're going to go through following the rotor button uh, to tell us which cylinder is on compression next and we'll check the rocker um, or hydraulic lifter adjustment uh, on that cylinder. All right, hopefully the worst one will be around half a turn or just a little bit less uh, than half a turn would be ideal. Well, okay guys, that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And as you can see, this isn't the best example to, well, actually it probably is the best example to use because it wasn't perfect. All right, so you can see the uh, differences in, uh, in everything I've done here and the problems I've, I've encountered. Uh, hopefully you won't get that problem. But uh, look, if you do, it all comes down to this cylinder head, right on a 202, that it, or even a 186, that the valve stem heights are straight, the spring pressures are all identical by the retainers being the same height. Then it makes rocker adjustment uh, accurate. The geometry, even though it could be wrong, the geometry, we don't know yet. Uh, we haven't had a look at the angles uh, of this rocker as it goes from uh, fully closed to fully open and working out hard lift, getting a 90 degree angle of the uh, rocker to the valve stem. But um, I might have a bit of a go at, go at it, and uh, that may come up in a future video if it turns out right. But yeah, that's uh, basically rocker adjustment or hydraulic lifter adjustment. Uh, it's really a hydraulic lifter adjustment. It's um, if you want to get technical, uh, rocker adjustment. It's not rocker. If we were adjusting the rockers, we'd be adjusting the geometry. Uh, but because these are fixed pedestals, it's not geometry we're concerned with at this point in time. It's the hydraulic lifter adjustment. And as you saw in the previous videos, the, the push rod was way too long because it was a 186 push rod in the 202 engine that we discovered. Uh, so we went through and we put the standard push rod in and the adjustments were still too great. So we were then forced to go 40 hours shorter and uh, it's worked out not too bad. It's the best we're going to do in this situation, guys. There's not much uh, I can do about it unless we take the head off and get it worked on. Uh, this is the best we can do for the time being. It'll fire up, it'll go, it'll go for, for years and years and years. Next time it'll have worn out, guys, just simple as that. Even some of the seats could be pocketing out as well, causing the uh, valves to sit up too high, and that'll be those tight lifters, I'd say. Okay. Uh, hope you enjoyed that video, it gave you some insights, um, we'll catch you in another one down the track, catch you later.